Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy and we're live uh today i have the pleasure of being joined by tiffany olsen um and tiffany is president of nuclear and precision health solutions at cardinal health tiffany thanks for joining me well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It's really great to have an opportunity to see you and to talk to others virtually. Definitely. You know, we were saying just before we went live that we've spoken a number of times on the phone. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why we didn't just organize a video call to start with. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting how much popular video conferencing has been. I don't even know if I had heard of Zoom prior to a couple of months ago, um, but I can tell you that I now feel like I am an expert. I have a lot of different virtual backgrounds. I can do all the little <laughs> hand signals and everything else on, on uh, Zoom, which has been great. Nice. So is your, is your background real or is it virtual? This is my home office. So this is my background. You know, I have worked out of my home actually since my first job out of college. And I've had offices, um, but throughout my entire career, I've worked both at home and virtually. My team that I uh, manage, my leadership team, most of them are virtual. Um, and so I've always had a home office and I know how difficult it is for those who are just starting this venture in home officing, especially when you have a family, whether it be a husband or children or pets, because everybody's got to get trained on the protocol. <laughs> no. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's true. Also, like yeah. the protocol, yeah, you're right. The protocol also of these video calls. I was speaking to someone the other day and he he has a big call with his team. And you know, some people switch their videos off because you can't force someone to share their video with you. And, and he, was, he was trying to get his head around, how do I keep these people engaged? Am I, am I boring them? Are they, uh, are they just checking their email? Are they just muted themselves and gone to make a cup of coffee? It's quite a new skill, isn't it? It's, a, it's like a, it's a particular thing to learn. Yes, yes, it is a very new skill, a uh, very new skill. Now for me, I will do uh, video calls some of the time but not all the time because I'm a pacer when I walk. I like to move around. I like to maybe sit outside for a bit. Um, and if you're videoing, it doesn't kind of always lend itself to that. Plus when, you know, you have to have good video habits. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, you, you don't want to eat. You don't want to, you know, do other things when you're videoing. So um, That's true. I'll, I'll look forward to, more conference calling uh, and uh, and live meetings, but I think that's going to be a while. It's true, actually. I'm I'm I'm, I'm very fidgety. I love I love getting up and like walking yep. around, and it's true. I've re and I never sit for so long because I'm always I'm walking around. I'm going between meetings. I'm, I'm in London, so a lot of the time you can walk around to different yep. meetings. And, you know, so this is a. Uh, Although I've adapted, I, I prefer, I think, my my London office <laughs> like routine, you know, the commute yeah. in and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, that's part of the joy of living in a big city. So I have two adult children. Actually, both of them are home with me now, which has been the gift that I received uh, with COVID because I've, you know, when else would I be able to spend this type of time with my adult children? But they live in Chicago, so a very big city here, and um, love getting out, using public transportation all the time, eating out all the time. So it's a very, you know, it's a really kind of fun, energetic, um, mobile lifestyle. Uh, and now they're in the suburbs with with mom and dad. <laughs> So where, so where are you? Are you situation. Right. So you're, you're, you're near Chicago, suburbs of Chicago? Or? Uh, we 
Um, I live in Indiana and in Indianapolis, okay. and it's a, it's three hours. Unfortunately, we don't have trains really that that go up there, which would be fabulous. But it's about three hours um, to Chicago. Nice. Wow. So you've suddenly got four of you living under one roof, and you probably haven't done that for a while. I haven't done it for a long time. Now, when my kids were born, I uh, worked out of my home. And so I always had a rule. I always had an office with doors. And when the doors were shut, mom was at work, whether I'm two feet away or 200 miles away, the same kind of good general practices apply. Yeah. And so I've just had that throughout my whole career. So I've been very, very fortunate um, in that, uh, you know, it gets great uh I, I can usually do my work. Now, I we do correspond with notes on the door. So my note on the door is, you know, quiet on Zoom uh, versus, <laughs> you know, the door is open. It's a free for all. Anybody can come in. Uh, so yeah. th that, that for me um, hasn't been something that I've had to adjust to. But I know a lot of my folks that work for me that are now at home, never been at home and have really, really little ones. Um, yeah. and you know, nobody has daycare right now. So there's, it's just a whole different way to work. And if both adults are, are, uh, working from home and you don't have an office, then, you know, it's the fight for who gets the kitchen table. Yeah. And what do you, ex what are you expecting from, from parents specifically with the young kids? I mean, are you expecting them to be working a, a, a traditional full day or like, Mum works in the morning, dad works in the uh, in the afternoon or, or something like that. I mean, what's the, the kind of scenario? Yeah, I would say flexibility is absolutely key. So, that, you know, and, and for me, it is all about flexibility. And when my kids were younger, I did have to flex my schedule um, really around theirs, you know, is what you need yeah. to do. But I will say the one thing that I've noticed with COVID is there is no respect for anybody's time on uh, digital devices. So I'll get called later than usual, texts, emails, everybody's next to their device. And so it's yeah. like, you have to, and what I've actually told my folks too that work for me, is you have to develop your own boundaries and stick to them. So yeah. if you need time away, you have to develop that boundary yourself because nobody else has these boundaries anymore. Where before, there was a rhythm. People were on planes. People were at a hotel sleeping. People were, you know, it, th there was much more of a, um, it, maybe a rhythm to the day. And, uh, yeah. you know, the emails would kind of ebb and flow that way. Now, you know, I wake up in the morning, I'm at my computer at seven, I'll have 35 emails. I'm like, what are these people doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know? just... They need to rest, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people are bored at home. I mean, what else is there to do? Yeah, you know, a lot exactly. of the time, it, you know, I've had to, uh, you really have to drag yourself away from the computer or from social yes. media and switch off. Um, but that means, I mean, you know, if you're not lucky enough to live in a, in a nice house or, or have grounds and have outside space, a lot of people in cities are in flats. It's right. hard. It you is. Know? It is. It's very, very difficult. And here, at least in Indiana, so we have a stay at home, only essential workers, uh, our grocery stores. Um, you know, I'm like an uh, old person. The mail comes and I'm like, yes, the mail's here. <laughs> Get to run out, you know, see somebody, maybe see a neighbor and wave. Um, but, you know, grocery stores, the drug stores, those are, of course, big events now. Um, but, uh, you know, for us, um, it's just really kind of that staying at home and, and trying to, trying to social distance or physical distance. Yeah. Yeah. But what about, what's the state of play where you are and, and, and kind of a bit more generally in, in the, in the region? Yeah. So, uh, almost, I think with the exception of just a few States in the United States, it is definitely stay at home. There've really been some hotspots, I'm sure, on the global news, New York, California, even Chicago, Indianapolis, the city that I live in, in Indiana, we're in the very, very middle of the United States, 
we've had some hot spots. Um, and I think for me, it really came home. I have a very good uh, friend of mine. Um, I belong to this women's CEO network um, that I've been a member of for years and years here in Indianapolis. It's a group of us, about 35 of us that get together periodically. And one of my good friends in the group um, owns a logistics company. And it came home for me how serious this is when she said that she had gotten an order for five refrigerated semis for the hospitals. Um, and of course, that's to help with um, people coming in who unfortunately succumb to the disease. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that um, no one in my immediate family has been impacted at all. I do have employees that uh, work for me who either themselves or their um, uh, family, some of our uh, customers uh, we know have been impacted. But uh, so far, I think the whole thing on flattening the curve at least has worked here, which is, which is good, keeping the fingers crossed. And then supposedly, uh, many states starting in May, so just next week, are going to start lifting. Uh, we have a lot of hospital customers who are telling us that um, they will start doing um, uh, optional surgeries. So they'll they'll start doing some of these um, extra surgeries and procedures. Some of the clinics are going to start opening up again. Um, so we'll right. see then kind of what what happens because people still Amazing. need general health care. Yeah. And for those that don't know, can you just run through what you and your and your team actually do? Absolutely. So um, my uh, company that I work for is Cardinal Health. So we are really a Fortune 15 um, uh, company. We do the wide spectrum of healthcare. Everything that we do is in healthcare. I run a division for Cardinal called Nuclear and Precision Health Solutions. So my particular organization, we develop, we manufacture, we um, dispense, prepare, and deliver uh, patient-specific doses uh, with radioactivity. So doses that would be used for within a PET camera. Cardiovascular doses are, are also very big for us. Oncology. Uh, we make products um, for others also, so not just ourselves. So we are um, really the, the leaders here in uh, nuclear pharmacy, in um, uh, radiopharmacy drugs, both diagnostics and therapeutics. Awesome. And what's been your response then to, to COVID? Um, I mean, you're, you mentioned some are at home. Um, yep. Are you still manufacturing? I mean, what's the kind of the, the, the scenario at the moment? Yeah. So as you can imagine, we are one of the essential companies that needs to continue to stay open. So we took a couple of precautions and we're doing a couple of things. So anyone who can work from home is at home. Um, anyone who is not directly involved in the manufacturing of our products and we run 24 seven. So uh, we have a lot of our people on um, in our pharmacies. We're located in almost every state in the United States. Um, and so we manufacture because of the nature of uh, radioactivity decaying, we are, it's very important that we're close to our customers. So in each of our manufacturing facilities, we have staff there. We've tried to stagger staff so that we don't have everybody at the same time do more shifts in case there is an issue. Uh, we've upped our um, cleaning procedures. We uh, have, of course, provided personal protective equipment for our employees. We've shut our lunch rooms down. We've shut most of our conference rooms down um, so that employees were asked to stay with that, you know, six feet away from each other when it's possible to do so. Um, and uh, really just making sure that we are taking care of not only each other, but doing our best with our customers. And I'm also happy to say that some of our customers have uh, changed some of their procedures along with some government uh, regulations to make it a little bit easier for our drivers and our customers to exchange product without having to stand in the ER line or just filter through the ER. So with the help of customers and regulatory agencies, it's, it's, it's helped out tremendously. That's great. And, and do you test as well, your employees? Or is it up to um, them? So we are doing temperature checks. Uh, we win um, uh, in the United States. 
the testing protocol, you have to go through a physician to uh, get the test. Um, if you are not a healthcare worker, healthcare workers, of course, are, are getting tested all the time. And so what we do is we have um, our employees take their temperature if they are feeling at all ill. Um, if they believe that they um, have contracted it, we do have a um, security office within Cardinal that they contact, and then um, we make sure that they uh, quarantine themselves at home. Yeah, brilliant. And 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 have you had many that have have become ill? Like, have you have you seen it spread amongst your group much, or have you? So, so I would say overall, we have. Um, it, it really, for the big numbers of, of employees that we have, uh, globally, we have over 50,000 employees. Uh, we have had a small percent that have um, contracted the disease. Uh, and so right now, I think our precautions of what we're doing um, has really worked. We also, uh, right now, um, uh, as far as what we know, people are either self-quarantine because someone that they know outside of work has been impacted or they think that they've contracted it outside of work. Um, so again, that's been, right. you know, really, really good, good for us. And brilliant, for brilliant. Amazing. And this, and just also really interesting. I mean, this is obviously extraordinary times. And um, I mean, certainly in my lifetime, I've never seen anything okay. like it. How, how is your, how have you had to adapt your leadership style? For this i mean there's yeah. so many different parts going on um how have you how have you adapted to it yeah well so i i think that whenever there's a crisis um and you have a lot of people who are very ner nervous being calm is one of the best leadership practices that you can do so it's being calm it's asking questions and it's making sure you have a plan. So for me, I individually will, uh, if I'm anxious about something, if I have a plan and I know what I'm doing and I feel good about where I'm going, whether it's, whether it's something that's very difficult to do or something easy to do, it's that plan that provides me the ability to be able to function. And so yeah. for me, um, one, staying calm, my direct leadership team, we have uh, check-in calls three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, we're just going to start now going to two days a week. These are one hour of getting everybody together. We start with what is our hot list. So what are the items that um, we really have to address immediately? And then we go around, and it's 15 people, um, and then we go around the phone, and everybody has an opportunity to talk about um, the COVID issues that they're experiencing. And we start yeah. with, first, tell me how you yourself are doing, because mental health is extremely important yeah. at this time. Um, tell me how your family's doing, and now tell me about the business. So those are the three things in our practice that we start with. And then it's really the plan. Um, so it's, uh, you know, then we can execute the plan and then they cascade that down also. So it's staying calm even when there's that crisis. And like you had mentioned before, Lewis, it's about being flexible. It's about the flexibility yeah. that then you need um, to give people because it yeah. is very unusual circumstances that people find themselves in. Definitely. The mental health aspect is crazy. I mean, I, I don't know how accurate these stats are, but I heard that um, that suicide for mental health in America has gone up 400 percent and, and calls to helplines 1500 percent. Yes. You know, it's, so, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a big issue. And, you know, it was an issue before, but I think I guess when, when you can see someone face to face, you can read their their nonverbal communication right when mm -hmm. someone's at home maybe they're on their own they're, they're not fortunate enough to, to, to have kids and, and, a, and a partner and stuff like that um you can't i guess you, you can't read it as well you know you can't get a sense of are they how are they feeling are they doing all right um how have you, have you is there anything you've been you've been doing to, to kind of make sure that your people are okay or yes and, and actually th thanks for asking this so i am um, one of the ambassadors with our human resource department on Mind Matters, and we just launched this two weeks ago, and it's really about making sure that people understand that mental health is about just how you're feeling. 
Um, it's about if you're feeling anxious it's, or angry or those types of things. And during these times, people that maybe normally wouldn't think that they need to seek help um, may benefit by uh, phoning in, by having a conversation. So it's part of launching um, the helplines that we have, the benefit lines, where to go if you are immediately distressed. So unfortunately, the suicide rates are up. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can imagine during these times, it's even more difficult for people who were struggling prior to, uh, they probably feel more isolated, especially as you said, if you're home alone, um, if you've lost your job, all of these triggers that normally are difficult for people to transition or challenging in people's lives, um, even become more so with the increased deaths that are occurring. Um, people that are individually impacted. I had um, an employee just uh, this week whose father passed away. Um, you know, and you, they can't have a proper funeral at this time. So yeah. that grieving process, it's, it's very, very difficult um, to go through. So we really want to make sure that our folks know where the resources are um, and that it's okay. It's really about taking the stigma away. I also have been the um, executive sponsor for our Disability Advocate Network Group for many, many years. And we've worked on trying to take the stigma out of you know, mental health uh, challenges, but everybody has them. The other thing that uh, we encourage, um, there's really a couple of apps that provide help with the Calm app, which is my new favorite app that uh, <laughs> that I use, it has sleep uh, so what is, every night. So what is it? So is it C A L M? Yes, C-A-L-M. Yeah, C -A -L -M. It's called Calm, and right. it is a app that uh, uh, has meditation on it. It has sleep stories at night. Uh, yeah. It has uh, music, you know, sound music. Um, that you can have. So I, I utilize it all the time because I'm not a good sleeper to begin with. And then, you know, just when I lie down, that's when my mind starts whirling, not slowing yeah. down. So it, it teaches people like me a little bit uh, better habits. And we also, um, as an organization, as Cardinal, provide the Mindspace app for people, which is uh, yeah. also a meditation app. Um, yeah. And uh, they just have to click within our website and they can get that. And what's the take up being like? Because it's, 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 it's from, from people I speak to, it's getting more and more popular, this mindfulness, you know, just taking five, 10 minutes, just to, you know, meditate, calm your, your head. And have you seen the take up of yeah. these apps really uh, increase? Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, even someone as skeptical as I was, um, am now, you know, the, the, the sponsor, yeah. the, the, the yeah. mouthpiece for, for these apps. So um, I've been trying to push them on my family. They won't do them. But uh, I'm like, here, listen, listen. It's a really great sleep story tonight. <laughs> well, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been beating the drum for um, like good nutrition, regular exercise and good sleep for, well, to anyone who'll listen, really. And and for 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 my mental health, um, I the, the exercise part. Um, well, all three are important, but but when I exercise and I've I've upped my exercise since I've been home, I'm doing almost every day. I'm doing something, some movement that you know gets the chemicals in your brain going. You feel good, yeah. and even if it's twenty minutes, a little online yoga session, or I do CrossFit online, oh. it really it really ups my it really ups my happiness levels. Um, yes. it's, it's great. And so, and then the other thing is, is, is a good diet. I've, I've tried, I think I'm eating more healthy now because we're getting like, we're fortunate in that in London, all the supermarkets are stocked and a lot of local ones are doing fresh produce. So you eat, I'm eating fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, yep. good quality food. And it really helps me, you know, it makes me feel good. And then my mind's better and you know, it's a good, yep. it's a good thing to be. Um, yes. I've also seen as well, and uh, I don't know about the US, but again, with with just kind of circling back to COVID a little bit, um, you know, if you if you do have a good diet and exercise well and sleep well, your immune system will be better able to cope with, you know, with these viruses if you if you get yeah. it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And you know, it all goes together. Your mind, which is that mental health, and your physical, 
um, and what you're putting into your body all make a difference. And I think it's, it's, it's hard when you're, you know, think of, you know, your life four months ago, you're busy, you're running around, you don't always have time to eat well, you're not next to a refrigerator, you might buy fast food or, you know, candy bar instead of lunch or with lunch. Um, and all of those things, you know, so um, it is, you know, I, I, I look at this as maybe taking an opportunity to reset some of those things too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, mother nature for keeping us in our rooms for the last, you know, few months. What really has gone up there, if I'm honest, is my coffee consumption. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause I, uh, me and my team love coffee. And so I, I bought them all a subscription to a nice uh, speciality coffee bag. They get it once ah. a month. Which is really nice. We all feel we're all drinking the same, you know, same coffee. Yep. It's, it's it's nice. It's nice to receive a nice bag of coffee as well. Um, but I've actually like just realized how much coffee I'm drinking. <laughs> I need to maybe cut down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's crazy. What have you found the the economic impact of, uh, to be? Because it feels like here, and I, and I know that, that that Donald Trump is is being discussing as well. We're at the kind of spot in in the world now where it's like the yeah, the economic impact versus versus staying at home what, what have you seen kind of you know local businesses national businesses and the effects that this has had yeah well we have um our unemployment rate which was at an all-time low prior to this is i think yesterday it was close to 12 percent, which is really unfortunate because um you know as we all know the higher the unemployment rate, the the harder the uh, families have uh, economically. So we've seen, um, and I, I have a, a friend who runs a restaurant where they've had to, unfortunately, let some people go. They're trying to keep people as busy as possible. They'd actually, and, and they said, um, we'd rather do delivery because it keeps one of our people that much more busier. So, yeah. um you know, we, we try to, matter of fact, we're having lunch um, from their restaurant. So ordering and then having it, having it delivered. But it's, it's really difficult in, um, in that way. I have a, another very close friend who runs the United Way here in central Indiana, which is, I, I, United Way is global. I don't know how familiar people outside of the U.S. are with it, but they help um, many, many non-for-profit groups and help with funding yep. those groups. Well, right away when this happened, the city of Indianapolis put in 18 million into a fund, gave it to United Way, and United Way is dispersing that fund. Really, one is childcare for people that are still working whose childcare is no longer around. Um, and that's gonna be an issue when people come back to work, um, yeah. is when do schools and childcare happen? after school care, those types of things. Um, also for just basic food, some of our food banks here have done things where instead of having people come into the food bank, they have the drive up, they set a table outside, people are driving up or walking up and they are going into the neighborhoods that, that need them the most. Um, so I think that uh, hopefully as the economy and businesses start to come back, that we'll see that unemployment drop. Um, but I think that there are some businesses who probably can't recover from this. Um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, it always takes time then to look at what other businesses are propping up and need help. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully the economy will, will come back. I think it'll come back in, in step changes, not in a huge, not in a huge way. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, once schools open, and I, I don't know about the US, I'm really hoping end of May in the UK, which is our half term. Oh, um, yes. I mean, I, I really hope, although, I mean, I don't think that many people agree with me on that. So, but I'm really hoping so, because you kind of, they get to a bit of a tipping point, because, you know, in a, in a really bad recession, a lot of bad things happen, you know? Yes, um, yes. And so I'd like to see a start to open up and and I, I spoke to a lot of, a lot of uh, big companies here and they're talking about you know giving staff you know you, you can work two days from the office three days from home someone else does another two days and yeah you know mixing yeah. it up and it feels like we'll get back over a period of time um yes. what's fascinating is how the post-covid era will look like 
um, you know, will, will we be going back five days a week to the office? Will, yeah. will office spaces shrink? I mean, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. Yeah, I think, you know, I have always been a believer in virtual, virtual teams. Um, you know, I, I am the, I considered myself the conference call queen. I could do a conference call from anywhere in the world. Um, I think more people are now discovered that that is a possibility, that you can have a virtual team and be productive. Um, you don't always have to be sitting in the same office. Um, and so I think there'll be a lot more of that type of thing. It'll be interesting to see what happens with commercial real estate um, yeah. and what businesses shrink, which ones, you know, distribution type businesses where you've got warehouses, maybe those grow. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think, too, yeah. flexibility in just things like childcare, daycare, schools, um, uh, you know, there, there, I think will have to be more flexibility from employers on what that looks like and, and how to work with, uh, uh, with individuals. Yeah. You might even go more, we have this thing in, in the UK, I'm just saying the gig economy, you know, like the, the Uber drivers or where people, and, and so I mean, you're already seeing the trend where people are opting for, for a number of, of, of gigs, a number of pieces of work rather than a, a traditional a traditional job um, yes. and this COVID seems to have given these some of these trends a big shot in the arm you know just really accelerated it and so i think we might you might see that you know more people opting for, for gigs versus uh versus permanent roles yes 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 I, I i i would agree i would absolutely agree and i think that this also could be a time where our it, huge cultural changes, not only just kind of the work changes, but the cultural changes on what people think are important to them, how people use technology, how they don't use technology, uh, how people want to work versus not, you know, versus leisure time, that type of thing. So I think all of those things are, are really going to change. And, uh, you know, you look at the retail stores, many of them might not be able to make it, but people still need clothes and they still need, you know, retail type goods. But what is that going to look like in the future? And, you know, before COVID, a lot of places, especially department stores, were kind of suffering with what does it mean to be more digital and all online? They've probably had to now go through, oh, so this is what it would mean. And now what is it going to look like for them in the future? So I think that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Definitely, definitely. It feels like this COVID has basically accelerated the Amazonification <laughs> of the world. I mean, I've heard, what, 175,000 extra jobs or something? I mean, yeah. you know, as, as if they needed more sales, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely right. Absolutely right, yeah. It's exactly. funny. On um, and and one, one big issue I've heard a lot and, um, you know, from speaking to business leaders around the world is, is, is they all feel like they need to, to quickly learn new skills now because, um, you know, how they led before, uh, it's, it's maybe it's, it's changing a lot now. You're gonna, they're going to have to, to manage, you know, virtual teams, remote workers, you know, people coming in and out. I mean, it's, it's a very different skill set I think you'll need in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I would absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And, you know, you just think the logistics of getting a large office back to work. We have uh, Cardinal has our global headquarters in uh, Dublin, Ohio. And, uh, you know, the campus is very large. We have several thousand people. How do you get people back in? When do you open up your, your lunch rooms or your cafeteria? Um, logistically, as, as you said, maybe some people are there two days, others three and vice versa. How does that look? What, what do you need to do? And what kind of benefits do you need to give folks that might be different in the future than they are today? And the training. Um, and what type of training now do we need to make sure to give our uh, supervisors and the managers um, and the leaders in this kind That's of true. new way. Yeah, and also if you're entering the workforce now, I mean, wow, you know, I mean, because I'm always quite an advocate of, um, you know, I'm, I'm into obviously flexibility and, and, and all of these things, but I, I feel that when you're entering the workforce from uni, you don't know how to work, right? Right. You've, you've gone to school, you've been told to, 
you've gone yeah. to college, university, you've been told to. Suddenly it's like, wow, how do I actually work? And so I've always been an advocate for, you know, like join, join, join a leader or a manager, not not the job. You'll learn more from, from them than you will from the actual task, probably. Yeah. Um, you might not even see your manager now as a, as yeah. a young person. You might yeah. have to try and work out how to be productive sitting at home. I mean, yeah. yes. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I think one of the one of the struggles actually it's something that um, I'm personally working with right now is how you onboard a new person that's new yeah. to your organization that you hired during this COVID period of time. Um, so we have one instance where a gentleman had been interviewing with a lot of people, not myself, uh, but a lot of other people. I was doing some of the final interviews, had to do them all virtually. And yeah. now he will start in a virtual environment. So <laughs> how do you, the onboarding of that, the introduction, the culture, how do you get your culture across uh, yeah. virtually? So all of those things, it's, it's going to be new. So that, that's, that'll be a new learning for me. No, it's really interesting because I've I've heard of companies that have you know cancelled offers that they'd made to people. Um, some aren't so keen just to do the the full process with video. Others are. Um, it's it's a very uh, you know it's very mixed. Um, yeah. and the onboarding process, absolutely. Um, yeah. Almost though, maybe it might be more personal. I mean, they get to see you in your home environment, you know, <laughs> versus yep. it gets a more formal work environment. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I also, um, I was just thinking too on kind of the onboarding. So uh, my children have a friend, one who was supposed to sit for the CPA exam, which of course is postponed. And another one who is um, going into her third year of med school. And right. they have a big exam between year two and year three. That's been postponed. Uh, so uh, when those will occur, when those will happen. So you have this whole generation of these large tests, you know, you think of SAT tests or other college entrance tests that are need to get postponed. And whatever that means or however that's going to look in the future, it, it pushes back a whole group of people um, yeah. later, yeah. either in their career or in their ability to take the next step. It's a shame they can't do it online. There must be a nice, uh, you know, nice platform when they can. Yeah. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. Yeah. There's a guy I spoke to uh, a few weeks ago, actually. He just graduated as a doctor in the UK. Ah. You know, so it takes, was it six years? He'd done a, he'd done a degree before. He's been studying for nine. Yeah. And his, um, his graduation was on Zoom. And he wore, a, he wore a dustbin bag, you know, the black dustbin bag. <laughs> Is it as a graduation cap? <laughs> I mean, you know, like you've got to make do. I mean, you've got to be yeah. adaptable, and you know, it's uh, it's definitely a, a crazy world. Well, look, really, really lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for uh, you. for joining me. And uh, you know, you guys seem to be doing some great stuff. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to meet face to face when all this is yes. over. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, stay uh, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. You too. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.